Sorry that you had to find out this way. They're in a bar downtown having a drink. Mike! <laughs> That's Mike's girlfriend. From Cheater's surveillance cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live, documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. Just like he's just trying to keep a big secret from me. I just can't go on anymore. I need to know the truth. I don't like being the one that has to show you this. Oh, Jesus. I asked her about him, and she said nothing was going on. Do you want to confront him? Oh, yeah. Hey, me there. Yeah, I got him. Hey, go. Go. Get right. up, camera. Real Reality Television as brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. Hello, I'm Joey Greco. Thank you for watching Cheaters. In this case, meet Kelly Manning, a young woman sensing her boyfriend may be seeking the company of other females. Consumed by despair, Kelly comes to Cheaters to ease her suspicions. Kelly Manning, age 25. A leasing consultant who is worried that her boyfriend may have a change of heart about his devotion to their relationship. I remember the first time Mike told me he loved me. We had just got back from dinner at his parents' house and uh, we were driving home. We were stopped at a red light and I could see him out of the corner of my eye. I could see him just staring at me. And I looked at him and I said, what? And he said, Kelly, I love you. And I just, I sat there, I didn't even know what to say back. I was, it was the happiest moment ever. We used to talk about getting married a lot. And lately, when I bring it up, it's like he acts different. Like, suddenly now, he, he's not sure if he's ready for that. And it's really confusing me. I'm not sure where I stand now. And I always knew where I stood with Mike. And lately, I don't know where I stand. I don't know how he feels. And he won't talk to me about it the way he used to. We've thought about moving in together, and um, when I bring it up now, he always has some reason why he doesn't want to talk about it or why it wouldn't work out, and I'm just confused. I don't know where I stand in this relationship anymore, and it scares me. I'm tired of him keeping stuff from me. I don't know. I don't know what he's doing behind my back. I don't know what he's doing when he says he's out with the guys. And I'm tired of the secrets. You know, I guess I can't say I'd no, he's lying to me, but I, I just feel it in my heart. When you're with someone that long and you know I'm that well, you can feel in your heart when something's not right. We've been moving together for two years. He's everything to me. He's the center of my universe. And I don't know what I'd do without him. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Mike Keller, age 26, a junior broker who may be surrendering to the urge to be with more than just one woman. Investigation day three. After several days with nothing to report, Cheaters investigators get a fix on the suspect as he is seen leaving his place of employment. After a short drive, he turns into the parking lot of an area coffee shop. Moments later, an unknown female approaches suspect Keller. He enthusiastically stands to greet her. The tension builds as the couple takes a seat and prepares to get to know each other a little better. Cheaters inspectors watch carefully as the suspect gives his new friend a book that he was just previously seen annotating. His companion appears to be overwhelmed by his romantic deed and displays her appreciation in the form of a friendly stroke on his muscle. The couple wraps up their liaison and heads for their respective vehicles. Investigation Day 7. Cheater's operatives get a visual on suspect Keller just as he exits his place of residence. He takes a casual stroll down the sidewalk and ends up at another high-class cafe. After he gets settled in, his female companion, who has now been identified as Vanessa Cook, enters and grabs a seat. He immediately presents companion Cook with another gift. She again paws at suspect Keller's arm to indicate she approves of his generosity. Cheaters detectives call it a day after suspect Keller and companion Cook publicly lock lips, then separately depart the scene. 
Investigation Day 9. Cheaters PIs stand by at suspect Keller's residence for several hours before finally observing him walking down the sidewalk. Cheaters inspectors follow suspect Keller to a rendezvous with companion Cook. She seems ecstatic at Keller's presence and happily scooches over to make a little room for him on the bench. Suspect Keller evidently is not one to beat around the bush. He quickly pulls out yet another gift for his sweetie pie. He obviously has forgotten all about his other sweetheart, as illustrated in this deceitful phone conversation. Hey, how are you doing? Can I get ready to go? What's up? Oh, I just got out of church. I was saying if you wanted to maybe meet me out for lunch. Sounds great, babe. I haven't had a chance to meet up with Joe. I was just a little bummed. Why don't you get there? Well, I haven't been there with a chance. Uh, I just feel like I have to get a hang out with him. Maybe we can go get some dinner or something maybe later on. Okay. If you want to go do that, I would love to. Okay, well, that sounds good. Call me when you're done. Cheaters operatives close the case after affirming that suspect Keller is trying to pull a fast one on his loyal girlfriend. Coming up, the confrontation. Now that Mr. Keller's seduction of another woman is undeniable, Cheaters promptly arranges a meeting with Kelly. Disturbed by the thought of her boyfriend's promiscuity, Kelly rushes to find the answers to her worrisome questions. Kelly, thanks for being here tonight. I don't want to waste any time. We do have some information that I think you've been waiting for, and I want to get right to that, okay? As we start the investigation, we're at Mike's, at Mike's job. He gets in his car, he stops at an outdoor coffee patio, sits down, I don't know if he's doing homework, but he just seems to be occupied with something. After spending some time there, he's joined by a young lady. <laughs> After spending some time visiting, he presents her with the book. Now on this day, we were able to catch up with Mike as he leaves his home. And again, he is seen carrying something. He's followed to a restaurant, and after some time is again joined by the same young lady. And he presents her with another gift. They walk down the street, and now we can really start to see what he's been up to. Now on this day, we caught up with Mike again leaving his apartment. And one more time, he meets up with this young lady, presents her with a trinket of some sort. <laughs> From there, they walk back to his apartment. And we can see that after some time, they go to the window. We see them in an embrace and a kiss. <laughs> Knowing what you know, do you want to continue? <laughs> Are you sure? I promise. Because you don't have to. I want to go. I want to go. Okay. You going to be okay for a second? Yeah. Let me call the detective. <laughs> We're just finishing up right now. They're in, okay. They're in a bar. Okay. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on one second. Okay. They're in a bar downtown having a drink. Okay. Okay. All right. Do that. Stay close and just let me know if anything happens. All right. Okay. They just got there. I can't believe it. Do you have tissues or anything? Hey, it's me. He just showed me all the tapes. He was with some, some blogger. I don't even know who she is. <laughs> they were in his apartment and they were kissing. <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna call you back, okay? <laughs> it's gonna be all right. Okay. Hang on a second. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we're on our way there right now. 
they're inside and they're close to paying out. It looks like they're getting ready to get the check. Yeah, she's okay. All right. All right, hang on. Yeah. Okay. They're headed for the door right now. Okay, good. We're gonna stay right here, okay? Okay. As soon as they get close to the back of the van, the detective is gonna let us know and then we're gonna go. If we go out too soon, they'll see us and probably take off, okay? You all right? Okay. All right, let's go. <laughs> Mike? Who's that? Who's that? The, who is that? Who are you? Who in the f are you, bitch? Don't, whoa, whoa. don't. That's what's going on. Hey, hey, Mike, hey. I'm joking. Hey, don't argue me. Hey, hey, hey. No, my hey, boyfriend, you hey, get off me. Hey, That's no. my boyfriend. That's my boyfriend, you get off me. Hey. Who's that? What do you mean, who's that? Who is this? What the f is Who is that? Who is this? Who is that? What are you doing with her? Well, maybe we can enlighten you a little bit. Seen what? He's been dating her for two years. Videotape of me doing what? With her, kissing her, holding her. Where? Which show videotape? What? What do you? Don't talk no, to me. Don't, don't talk to me. Why did you? Don't, don't talk to me. Is this? No, we need to go talk. No, don't talk no, to me. Talk I'm not to talking you. to you. What the is this? Mike? I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. Kelly, come here. I, I need to talk to her alone. Away okay. from you. Uh, well, you know that's not going to happen. What do you mean it's not going to happen? It's not going to happen. You can tell me I can't talk to my girlfriend, Kelly. Kelly, do you want to tell? <laughs> what? know what what's going on like I just we started dating it's, it's pretty pathetic to go Christ. here to this no, are pathetic that yeah that you've got to bring these people no, in. this is not your fault no one's blaming you for anything okay so I mean know that why didn't you never have sex with me for like the past three months what the is that I've got a headache I've got to go to work early in the morning I don't want to talk to him I don't want to talk to him coming up the conclusion I don't want to talk to him. I don't want to talk to him. So now you don't want to talk to me? You just you were just crying and screaming on my shoulder over there. You no. want to talk to me. Let's go I don't talk. want to talk you to you. Talk? Let's talk. You know what? Let's talk about the past three back. months that we haven't yeah, had been no. having sex. What about that? The past three months that we don't haven't been having sex. Don't talk to me, Mike. You just told me to you, you bring all these people, make this big damn public ordeal. You want to talk to me? You're making a fool out of me on national TV. Then you you fool me. You I'm the one. Me now? You, I made a fool you of you. Talk to me I now? made a fool of you. You're the one that said they're doing all that behind my back. And I made a fool of you. I've been trying to get it. No, 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 no. I called you. But you to go what have you been doing for the past three months? I've what been have you been doing for the past three months? You won't even talk to me. No, you've been sitting no. at home. That's about it. Go run off your little girl from Mike. Go get her. Forget two years. Two years? You're the one who did the Kelly, not me. That's how you make your paycheck, ruining people's lives, right? And that guy too, that's how you make your paycheck? Is that him? He's coming back now? Well, this has nothing to do with you. Wait for me for two seconds, please. I just want to talk, that's it, without these guys. Just tell me you'll do you that. Had... Tell me you'll do that. Tell you me can you'll call do me that. later. Can we talk? Maybe. Baby, please. I, that's that's all I'm asking. I, I know. Stupid. Listen, listen, no, okay, wait, no, 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 no. What's no, the relationship based no. on, Mike? What's the relationship based no. on? What's the relationship based on? Trust. Trust. And what does this prove? That I can't trust you. What is aside, this, what is this aside guy from prove? the camera, it has prove? nothing to do with what him. What does he prove? He proved, what do you mean it has I couldn't to do find with it them? on my own. I couldn't find it on my own, Mike, because, I, no, I couldn't see that on my own, okay? Because I don't know where you're at at all times. I don't stalk you. Oh, so this guy was your eyes or whatever. Yes, he was. He was, yeah. He could see it for you, but you couldn't see it yourself. Well, I don't know if that's the thing to say to me. You don't know. So don't, uh, don't give me that one. I know that ain't the thing. You can't get back in the car. That's what I am. I just want to get the out of here. You're just going to take me back to my car? Yes. Yes, I am. I am. I am. Call me, sweetie. Just go. You know what? You are an intelligent, bright, and attractive young lady. Thank you. And in six months, you're going to look back on this, and you'll probably laugh at whatever it was that you thought you saw in him. 
because the future for you is limitless. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. I needed it though. Now I know. Now I know. After the confrontation, Kelly acknowledges the peril of her relationship. At the end of the show, Cheaters informs you of her decisions. But next, Cheaters revisits Latasha Johnson, exposed previously on the show with a man other than her husband. Latasha sits with Cheaters to discuss her feelings on what happened that day. Latasha Johnson, age 21. Tasha speaks with cheaters concerning her confrontation with Fred Calhoun on the show. When the coup first came up on me, I was really nervous. I mean, you know, coming out the store and then I look over and I hear Freddie calling me and then I see this crew just rush me. Oh, my heart just, just fell. I didn't know what to think. I didn't know what to do. I was just kind of froze. And then when I seen him, I knew that, you know, I had did something wrong and that he caught me. What, what are you doing? What's going on? Who is this? Have you seen him? Me and you are not getting along. You're not helping me with the baby. I mean, I work though, Tasha. I work. All you I do is you work. You don't pay any attention to me. I raised the baby. I raised the baby by myself. No, you much. don't. I you work. You do not help I work. me at all. So what? Doesn't so? mean nothing. I did, you know, go to another guy, but I did not really cheat on him. I was just with him, talking and having someone to talk to, basically, because Freddie wasn't there. So I really wasn't cheating, but the thing is, I was spending my time with someone else besides Fred, so it was wrong. Well, I knew she had a baby by some guy, but you know. But I don't I, love him. What I told, what I mean, told me well, was then not what together. What you doing, Tasha, if you don't love them? I, mean. I want to be with him. We have a baby together. We've been together for two years. This is just a side thing. Well, after the conversation, I did speak with Larry again. The thing with him was he was just shocked because I didn't tell him about Fred. I didn't let him know anything about Fred. And, you know, he was just kind of shocked that I didn't tell him. He, he was like, you know, you could have let me know that you had a boyfriend and you know, I would have left you alone and none of this would have happened. I'm sorry, I really... Communication is I know. Right now. We're just going to have to work through this, okay? Can we work through we this? We need to talk, just we need to talk. Okay, can we work through this? Are we still going to be together? Talk about it. We're going to talk about it. Yeah, my attitude and relationships has changed a whole bunch. I know that, you know, anytime I'm having problems, I can't just go and find someone else. That, that does not work. You have to, you know, sit back, evaluate what's going on, and find out a way to fix it instead of just saying, oh, well, forget it. I'm not going to try to work at it and just go find someone else. That doesn't work. We need to talk. We need to talk, we need to talk now. We're going to be five men together. We need to talk, talk now. Talk we're going to be five. She goes, she'll call me later. Oh, it don't even matter. You know how that goes. Well, I think that, you know, through all this cheaters and everything, everything that happened, that we will be together. We're still together now, going strong. You know, we're working on getting married, like I said. Hopefully, around July, we should get married. That's what we're going for. And with the baby, everything's great. She's great, and we're just doing just fine. Kelly Manning fesses up to being very confused and is worried that she might get weak and take Mr. Keller back. She claims that her love for him runs so deep that it seems impossible for her to break it off and go on with her life. Kelly says she plans to visit with a therapist in an effort to discover why he has such a profound grasp on her timid emotions. So far, she's avoided all of Mr. Keller's attempts at contacting her. Mike Keller confesses that he did behave in an insensitive manner but he says that it was all in the best interests of improving his relationship with Kelly, noting that he just wanted to be sure she was the one. Mr. Keller is quite confident Kelly will realize that finding another man with his level of distinction will only end up in disappointment. For her part, Vanessa Cook conveys her opinion of the matter only by saying that Mr. Keller is an arrogant little runt whose days of two-timing have come to an end. Vanessa comments, if I'd known Mike had a girlfriend, I never would have gotten involved with him. 